Breaking news. On Friday, May 3, China initiated an unprecedented mission in human lunar exploration history with the launch of the Chang'e 6 spacecraft. Its objective is to gather and bring back samples from the enigmatic far side of the moon. We have selected some of the highlights of the mission so watch this entire video to the very end so you won't miss the exciting part of the launch. Before we begin with this intriguing story, we appreciate that you can subscribe to our channel so that we can bring you more content similar to this one. Thank you so much for your support. Let's continue. The Chang'e 6 spacecraft, aboard a Long March 5 rocket, took off from the Wenchang Space Launch Site located on the southern island province of Hainan, China, at 5.27 p.m. Beijing time. Roughly 37 minutes post-launch, the Chang'e 6 separated from the rocket and embarked on its planned Earth-Moon transfer orbit. The orbit had a perigee altitude of 200 kilometers and an apogee altitude of approximately 380,000 kilometers, as reported by the China National Space Administration, CNSA. The CNSA confirmed the successful launch of the Chang'e 6 spacecraft. Wu Weiren, an academician of the Chinese Academy of Engineering and the chief designer of China's lunar exploration program, stated, the mission to collect and return samples from the moon's far side is a first. Our current understanding of the moon's far side is limited. If the Chang'e 6 mission accomplishes its objective, it will offer scientists the first direct evidence to comprehend the environment and material composition of the moon's far side, which holds great significance. He added, the mission, however, is fraught with difficulty and risk. We eagerly anticipate its success. The Chang'e 6 spacecraft, similar to its predecessor Chang'e 5, consists of an orbiter, a lander, an ascender, and a returner. Upon reaching the moon, it will execute a soft landing on the far side. A robotic arm will extend within 48 hours of landing to collect rocks and soil from the lunar surface, while a drill will penetrate the ground. Concurrently, scientific detection work will be performed. Once the samples are securely sealed in a container, the ascender will lift off from the moon and rendezvous with the orbiter in lunar orbit. The returner will then transport the samples back to Earth, landing in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region in northern China. The CNSA anticipates the entire flight to span approximately 53 days. The moon's rotation and revolution cycles are synchronized, resulting in the same side always facing Earth. The unseen face, often referred to as the far side or dark side of the moon, is not dark in terms of light, but rather in terms of the mystery surrounding its largely uncharted terrain. Images obtained through remote sensing reveal stark differences between the moon's two sides. The near side is relatively flat, while the far side is densely populated with impact craters of varying sizes and has significantly fewer lunar mares. Scientists hypothesize that the lunar crust on the far side is considerably thicker than that on the near side, though the reason for this remains unknown. The Apollo Basin, an impact crater within the South Pole Aitken Spa Basin on the moon's far side, has been selected as the primary landing and sampling site for the Chang'e 6 mission, as stated by Wang Chang, the mission's deputy chief designer. The immense spa basin, formed by a celestial collision over 4 billion years ago, has a diameter of 2,500 kilometers, roughly the distance from Beijing to Hainan, and a depth of about 13 kilometers. As the oldest and largest impact crater on the moon and in the solar system, it may hold the earliest information about the moon, according to scientists. Zheng Xingguo, a scientist at the National Astronomical Observatories of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, CAS, suggests that the massive impact that created the spa basin might have ejected materials from the moon's depths. If these materials can be collected and returned to Earth for analysis, they could offer fresh insights into the early impact history of the solar system and the moon's geological evolution. Zheng emphasizes the importance of obtaining first-hand samples from the moon's far side, stating, these samples are crucial for deepening our understanding of the moon's characteristics and differences between its two sides, and for unveiling the moon's secrets. Yang Wei, a researcher at the CAS Institute of Geology and Geophysics, notes that over 300 kilograms of lunar samples have been collected from the moon's near side during 10 missions conducted by the United States, the Soviet Union, and China. He adds, our comprehension of the moon's formation and evolution is largely derived from the study of these lunar samples, 
which is also vital for future deep space exploration. The entire mission is laden with a multitude of challenges, with each phase being interconnected and inducing anxiety, stated Wang. To facilitate communication between Earth and the probe on the Moon's far side, China earlier this year launched the QUEQ IAO2 relay satellite, also known as Magpie Bridge 2, into a highly elliptical lunar frozen orbit. Despite the Chang'e 4 mission achieving the world's first soft landing on the Moon's far side in 2019, the Chang'e 6 mission still confronts substantial risks. The Moon's far side's rugged terrain presents significant challenges for landing, according to space experts. Wang noted that the Chang'e 6 mission requires new technological advancements in areas such as lunar retrograde orbit design and control, swift intelligent sampling, and takeoff from the Moon's far side. Huang Hao, a space expert from the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, CASC, mentioned that the design of the Chang'e 6 probe is akin to that of the Chang'e 5 probe, which gathered samples from the northern hemisphere of the Moon's near side. However, since Chang'e 6 will land in the southern hemisphere of the Moon's far side, the mission will employ a lunar retrograde orbit to accommodate its sampling task, added Huang. Deng Shangjin, another expert from CASC, explained that as the QUEQ IAO2 relay satellite orbits the Moon, there will be periods when the Chang'e 6 probe will be unable to communicate with Earth controllers during its operations on the Moon's far side. We undertook a thorough analysis of data from hundreds of terrestrial experiments and utilized artificial intelligence to enhance the spacecraft's design, thereby improving its autonomous control capabilities and sampling efficiency, Deng stated. Deng added, the quantity of samples that Chang'e 6 can gather is uncertain and cannot be precisely estimated at this time. Our objective is to collect 2 kilograms. The Chang'e 6 mission is equipped with four payloads, developed through international collaboration, thereby offering global scientists more opportunities and combining human expertise in space exploration. The Chang'e 6 lander carries scientific instruments from France, Italy, and the European Space Agency, ESA, Sweden, while a small satellite from Pakistan is aboard the orbiter. Once the Chang'e 6 spacecraft enters lunar orbit, the small satellite will be deployed to perform in-orbit imaging tasks. A laser retro-reflector, developed by Italian scientists, will be utilized for positioning and distance measurement in future lunar missions, according to Wong. The ESA, Sweden has developed a lunar surface negative ion analyzer that will detect negative ions and examine the interaction between plasma and the lunar surface. Additionally, a scientific instrument developed by French scientists will detect radon isotopes and investigate the transmission and diffusion mechanisms of volatile compounds in the lunar environment, Wang added. China adheres to the principles of extensive consultation, joint contributions, and shared benefits in its international cooperation on lunar exploration. It is open to engaging in various levels and types of cooperation with countries and international organizations worldwide based on equality and mutual benefits, stated Jay Ping, the deputy director of the CNSA's Lunar Exploration and Space Engineering Center. China has opened applications for the international community to borrow and study the lunar samples collected by the Chang'e 5 mission and invites scientists worldwide to participate in its future lunar and planetary exploration projects, Jay further added. Kamarul Islam, a professor at the Institute of Space Technology of Pakistan, expressed his deep appreciation for the collaborative experience with China. He suggested that smaller countries, unable to venture into space independently, should be given opportunities to conduct space research. We take immense pride in being part of this historic mission, said Pierre-Yves Meslin, the principal investigator for the detection of outgassing radon from France, expressing his anticipation for further space cooperation between the two countries. Neil Melville Kenny, the technical officer for negative ions on the lunar surface at ESA, emphasized, the very essence of space exploration encourages us to perceive our planet as a unified entity and promotes collective human thinking. It is absolutely crucial for us to continue our nascent journey into the cosmos by working collaboratively. We hope you like this exciting Chang'e 6 launch video. That's all for now and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching our China Tech Update. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel, 
like, and share our video. We will bring you more similar contents like this one. Thank you again for watching.